Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, each and every one of you. Good morning, everyone. It's a new day, right? We're here. We are so here, and I'm just I'm here to just make sure that everybody's okay and to just talk to us a little bit about what kept us up at night. For me, um, something has been on my mind. I, I took an, a, an Uber the other day and I came home and something I've been resting on my mind. I lay down at night, so I closed my eyes and I, it, it, just, it just keeps walking through my brain. And I just wanted to reach out and talk to us as a family about this thing. So if you have not subscribed to the channel, is it? please do so. Please do so. I like, um, I want to give God the glory first and foremost that I see that we're getting some more views, um, um, some more likes. Um, so please support the journey, guys. It's not a selfish journey. It's a journey that is beneficial to many. Please support me, support me, because in supporting me, you are supporting my students that are living, that are here with me. Um, my school is in a, not a well-to-do area. It, it is the inner city. And we know that it's, for some in the inner cities, it is tough. It is tough. So my channel has been a channel that whatever resources come from there, it goes into the support of my grade level students, my sixth grade students. Um, so please like the video, share the video so that others encourage your friends, your families to just, to just support me, to just subscribe to the channel and watch a video or two or more when they're able to. Um, a lot of my videos are just listening videos because as I encourage and uplift somebody. And so you share them and even one person if you uplift one person, we are on our way. And because that's the whole idea, that you give somebody food for thought, just to remind them that they are important, to embrace who they are, and let no man steal their joy. So please support me, guys, so that we can reach others, um, and we can also support the students that I work with during the school year. I'm on summer break, thank God for that. I'm going to get some things done today, um, and I will be videotaping it. Um, so you'll see another video. Might be in the same outfit, but listen, whatever. Um, so what kept me up? And I need you in the comments to talk to me about some of the things that keep you up. Even one thing, one major thing that keeps you up at night, that it just can't go away. Oh, it's early morning, it's 10 o'clock, 10.47. I haven't gone to the kitchen yet. I went in the shower, I cleaned up my bedroom, um, put away some things, got the laundry basket ready because I will be in the workspace today, hopefully. And so on my way down, I'll be bringing the hamper down to put a load in the machine so it could keep on doing its thing while I work in the workspace. So what kept me up, guys, is the fact that I went, I had something to do. I need to get to a notary republic, and I um, had to use an Uber. Once I got to the notary republic and got the paperwork done, I then had to go on to, um, uh, to get the thing dropped off for UPS. So on the trip, to the UPS um, it space, um, the, ta the, the Uber that I got into, the taxi that came for me, um, a young man, he seems like a young man, was driving, who was driving. Um, we just started talking. We're talking about allergies and 
about his son, how it's so hard on the son with the allergies. And we were just talking. And he says, like, for me, mine is only seasonal. It's only in the spring that I suffer from, from, from the allergies. But he says his son suffers right through the year. There's always something. So I was talking to him about changing the diet, you know, get rid of the dairy products, cut back on the sugars and things, because all of that sugar, all the starch that we eat, it turns sugar. And and so, like, when you blow your nose, that no, that snack, you know, that's all sugar. The mucus is sugar. Um, everything we eat, that's what happens. Sugars, sugar turns mucus. And when it, <clears throat> your sinuses become over overactive you know that those are things that you need to cut back on so he said that he the son eats cheese and stuff like that on his sandwich so that's something he would be looking into and then he looked and said to me and this was a guy who was skinny it's like i would be two times him or more i don't know i'm not let me not say that but very skinny young man very skinny person he was in his 40s very skinny and and you look people as I, I'm, I'm saying all of that and to let you know why it kept me up it kept me up because I'm, I'm, it's going over in my head that as he talked about um, his situation it just shocked me because just like when we walk into spaces people look at us and they're, they're ready to to judge us and, and 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 cast down all manner of of sicknesses on us because we have weight on our bodies. It's the same way when we look at skinny people, we figure, oh, they are perfect in perfect health. And so when he said to me that, yeah, he suffers from the allergies so badly, but the worst one for him is the diabetes that is just eating him up just eating him up and I'm looking at him and I right away it flashes in my head I was saying but you no, I said to him but you're not even fat isn't it that fat people are the ones who should get diabetes and cancer and high, high blood pressure and um, strokes and heart attacks and all of this because so many people they look at people because they're skinny they said oh they're so healthy so you're saying that to me now. It, I was like, just like, he probably was looking at me in the rearview mirror because I was just so frightened when he said how badly his diabetes was. And I got out of the taxi and I got my thing done and I, I, I got on another one and got home and I'm just thanking God. I'm just thanking God. I walked into the store with the, with the package and I'm just giving God the glory. I'm just really giving God the glory. Because my people, a lot of you are on the journey with me. Whether you're on the journey with me or not, whether you're overweight or not, I know you have gone somewhere as I, re, 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 I will re, restate, I will talk, tell you again. And when I moved back here from Maryland, because in Maryland they did the, the MRIs and to show my shoulders, the rotator cuffs were very torn up. And they were torn up because before I went to Maryland, I used to be in the gym. I used to go to the gym. I wasn't a big, 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 big person. So I used to be in the gym and you know, the, the guy, the trainer loved me because he said, I never give up. I, I would just, I, I had stamina. I had resilience. So I, when he give, put me through the sets, I was getting them done. I, would, I was getting them done. And then one evening, he traded me and said he was busy with a new person and he wanted me to work with his assistant. And I remember this thing that assistant, he gave me... Um, the bar on my shoulders he gave me the bar and I had to hold it like this and then do the squats do you know do the, the go the go down and 
I don't know if that's what created the problem with my shoulders. I don't know. I do know that when I was teaching in Maryland, again, I don't drive. I, I, <laughs> I like to find homes near to my school. And I was able to walk to the school and walk back home. So taking home, I think I had a hundred and something kids that we had five, six grades at the time. And so I was logging home, guys, the paperwork for the kids, the textbooks, the different things. My book bag is, was heavy every day. And so it seems like I feel like in lugging it on my shoulder, lugging it on my shoulder, I didn't have the pulley at the time. Um, it, it just seemed like that's what messed up my shoulders very badly. But I'll tell you this, that when I did the MRIs and they saw it, they wanted to do surgery right away down there. But I thought about it. I said, no, I teach. I need my arms. Um, I also... Donnie had gone home to do something. And so I said, I'm not going to do a surgery with me by myself here. And the kids were up here, so I told them no. So then we moved back. I moved back. We moved back here. My daughter came up and my son was here. And they encouraged me to come back where they were. And I came back to work in this area. And I went to the doctor and I, and I took the, the things. But one of the things was... Soon as he saw me, without even looking at the MRI, he thought it had to be arthritis. And I don't know why I kept going back to him. I think I kept going back to that orthopedic doctor because when we had a conversation and I showed him the MRI and he saw it was my shoulder, he said, how have you been taking care of yourself? You must have been doing this in a lot of pain. And I said, yes. Every day I get up just to bathe and to wash my body properly. Yes, a lot of aches, but I just pushed through it. I just kept going. And then he, I, he said, surgery. I said, is there another option? He said, therapy. And we did therapy in my arm, my shoulders loosened up. I could raise them over my head. I, could, I did well. And so I thank him for that. So years later, when my knee with the, with the ligament torn in it, and I'm going to have walked in and we sat down and he says, you know, it has its arthritis. You get to this age and da 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 it's arthritis. And right away he wrote the paper and I'm getting treated for arthritis. I'm doing my therapy and I told you guys before, I'm doing the therapy but I'm going in, I'm struggling at school on the long corridors and I go in and I'm doing the therapy. I'm doing everything that they say. I'm there with the guy. Hot and cold applications. Riding the, the bike. Doing everything they ask. Him massaging. Him doing. And I'm leaving there in pain. And it took about after the fifth session. I said, this can't be. It has to be something else. And I reached out. I said, can I get an MRI on my knee? And they approved it, and right away, when it came back, sure enough, there was a ligament torn in my knee. So that was restricting my movement. It was painful. But I said, if I was a skinny person walking in there, I am sure that they would not have looked to think that, oh, it's arthritis so soon, because you, you, you're, you're skinny, right? You're slim. And so there, you, you, there, there, nothing. You shouldn't go through anything. But as soon as you have some meat on your body, and I didn't have a lot of meat, I didn't have all of this. But I, as I said, I wasn't a skinny chick from day one. And with the getting older, of course, it, it's arthritis. So just like they look at us and they are looking at you, and as soon as they see you, they're seeing death. It's only death. It's all of the doom and gloom because you have weight on your body. Nobody thinks that, well, one lady, years ago I met her. I came here and I was doing home health care. 
and I had the patient's friend. And the morning, as I was leaving the patient's um, home, the, the lady came out and walked with me, a white lady, and had some meat on her bones, not, not, nothing to become like, oh my God. But she, had, she, she, she was not a skinny lady, and as we walked out, she says, people complain about being fat, but they shouldn't because I am home and my appendix bursts in me. And all that poison, when I went into the murder, when I went in to the hospital, you know what the doctor told me saved me? The fat around my belly. The fat around her belly absorbed the poison from the appendix. So she was saying, it's not every time people talk about people being fat, it's a bad thing. It, it, fat is not always a bad thing. It keeps you warmer. It, you know, she was talking about all the things that fat does for the body. And so as I went over these things in my head, her words did come back to me also. And, and to, to say, fat, being fat is not a life sentence, guys. Love yourselves. I love myself. I am so thankful that I'm doing so much. Regardless of what people think and how people thought I couldn't walk, people thought I couldn't do, I couldn't. It's just that when the weight, the, when the weight became more during the, 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 after the surgery and during COVID. And so I think because I was also stressing myself and there was a lack of movement, not enough movement. I wasn't as strong. You know, I wasn't as strong. I was just sitting here, not knowing what to do or how to do it. I didn't know so much because we weren't getting enough information. And everybody you talked to was so afraid because the, 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 the airways was just filled with so much doom and gloom, so much death, so much death, so much death. You look in New York City, you see the, the, the things lined up, the trucks lined up with the dead bodies upon dead bodies. And you're hearing about the thousands and thousands of death. And you're not understanding it. Is it something that just going to come through your door, the air just blowing and you get sick and die? I didn't understand it at all. Because a lot of people are giving information, didn't know themselves. A lot of people who die and don't have proof, don't quote me on this, but I know it was because of fear that the people who needed to take care of them, them they themselves were afraid. And so I don't think they, they, they did as much as they could, but it's what it is. We went through it and it's what it is. But what keeps me up at night, it's the, it's, it's the fact that being fat is not a death sentence. I have to, you know, it, it kept me up because this man was so skinny. And all of a sudden, I'm saying to myself, being fat is not a death sentence. Just take care of yourselves. Get up and move. Get up and walk. I think even with the driving, I think for me, I am not embracing it at all. I'm not embracing it. I think what I need to learn to do is to just make up my mind because I'm not living far from my school. And I'm not embracing the driving at all. I am not. I am not. I am not. You know, it's a good thing. I, I, I overcome my fear, drove to my school, parked, drove around, parked, reversed, you know, drove around, came home. And, and I had support next to me. My sister was next to me. But I, I'm still not excited because I know with my weight, if I get into this driving thing, I'm going to not want to walk as much as I've been doing. I know in my head that once I get used to this driving and is able to get out here, get to work, jump back in the vehicle, instead of walking home, instead of putting myself in the mindset to walk to school in the mornings because I can do it. I can get up and start doing that instead of waking and instead of Danny have to get up and to take me because I feel guilty when he gets up to take me. So I'm honestly saying to you guys that 
I am not excited. I know a lot of you are happy that I moved the truck and I did so well, but I'm not embracing it because I want to keep on walking. I want to keep on moving. And if that's the way I'm going to get most of my movement in, along with walking around my building, moving kids from one class to the next, taking them to breakfast, taking them to lunch, um, picking them up from specials, bringing them to specials, walking in in the mornings, walking out in the mornings, sometimes taking them out for recess and get to walk in. Then if that's what it is, then at least I'm getting some movement in. But if I start driving, it's going to take away from me even walking home. So it's something that I have to think about. Don't want it to keep me up, but I need to think about it. So this morning, guys, as I say to you, being fat is not a death sentence. Change your diet, yes, change what you eat. If you're a person who is addicted to the sweet foods, you really, 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 really have to step down on that. You have to cut back on it. Get in your veggies. Get in what you need to get in, but cut back. Drink your water. Get your, your, your washouts, your, your whatever you call it. Your, 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 some people call it, they're getting a, whatever they call it. But do your, do, your, do your cleanse, right? Do your cleanse so that you're not having that built up stuff in your body and that is turning all into this fat, fat, fat. Wash your system out occasionally so that all of that that didn't, that didn't come out, come down to the anus and to get passed out um, through the colon, that it is not sitting up there. You know, flush it out, flush the system. Drink your water as you... Do the, the cleanse, drink your water, drink your water so that you're flushing out some stuff. And then you start again and you know you eat and not everything is going to come out unless you have the right balance. Your fruits, your veggies are mixed up nicely in there so it can process nicely and flush it out. But get up and love yourselves. Get up and move. Get up and move. Get up and move, guys. And don't let anyone just look at you and say, yep, diabetes, yes. Sometimes you go to the doctors and sometimes, I don't even know if sometimes the medication they give to, 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 to people are, are you know, are, are what it is. Because too much chaos in the world today, too much drama, too much people just looking for a quick dollar bill instead of, you know, instead of being honest. Because if they make you well, they have no money to collect. So sometimes you have to do your stuff and take care of yourself. And I'm doing the same thing on my end, guys. All right? So again, they look at us and they think that you have the weight, you, you are doomed. And we're looking at the skinny people and we think that they're in perfect health. But it's not so. There are fat people out there who are very healthy, and there are skinny people out there who are very, very sick. So relax. Do what you got to do for you, and go live your life. Love, love, love yourselves. And if you love something, you're going to take care of it, right? You're going to do everything that you can for it, right? So go love yourselves and enjoy your life. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your life. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. We're not here forever. No one, no matter how we lose weight or lift weights or whatever, we're not here forever. Some people are fighting the process. They're fighting the process. They're fighting the process. But it doesn't make sense. You fight the process and you are unhappy. So love yourself. Live your life to the fullest. Because, again, nobody is here forever. Take care of yourselves. If you can't be good, be careful. Make it a great day by choice. Make it a great day by choice.